when a woman with a dark past. She got into black magic. She drank human blood. Awakens dormant spirits. Come and show yourself. She unleashes a terrified ghostly child. She was scared of something that was in the house. And a sinister spirit with deadly intentions. We had no clue how intense it was about to get. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. In the summer of 2013, Stephen McDade, his girlfriend Taylor Jones, and their five-year-old daughter Isabel move into a small suburban home. One of the reasons why I like living out towards this way is uh, there's woods. I love to hunt and fish the rivers and the creeks. The Ohio River is right there. It's very quaint. It's very quiet. We like that. <laughs> quiet is good. Guys? Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? What do you have? Luna, take it. <laughs> so cute. Me and Taylor were living with my father, and uh, after we had Isabel, we decided it was time to get our own place and move out and start our life together. It's a natural next step for this young couple who have been together nearly nine years. Taylor, she's beautiful. She is my best friend, and we love each other to death. He's just all around a great person. I couldn't ask for anything better. I mean, you think of family and I see us. I've never been happier. <laughs> there you Good. go. Oh, go play with Luna. <laughs> Thought it'd just be a great place if we could raise our little girl, grow as a family, keep strong and be good to each other. Luna's got a better house than I do. I know. <laughs> Built in the early 1900s, the home includes a refurbished attic, which now serves as Isabel's bedroom. Isabel has her own little penthouse upstairs. She's very happy to have her own space and plenty of room to be running around. Mainly, we wanted Isabel to be comfortable and happy. Stephen is an avid hunter and keeps a handgun in the home for protection. My main concern with having a gun was Isabel. She's been around guns, you know. Her daddy, he's an avid hunter. We're very, very cautious with it. Don't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> hey, um, before you go, you think maybe you could sit down? I got something I want to talk to you about. So I was thinking that um, now that we have our own place, maybe we could um, invite your mom over. Taylor hasn't seen her mother for nearly 10 years. Stephen hopes that they can mend their broken relationship. She talked about her mother, Joyce. Uh, she wasn't in her life too much. They had a fallen out. And I know they just have a hard time seeing eye to eye. The kind of person she is the things she's done, I, I don't know. My mother left me when I was very young and went over to Germany and got caught up in some things that she should not have gotten caught up in. She got into black magic. She drank human blood from a chalice. She has a pentagram tattooed on her. My dad did anything and everything he could to keep me safe um, because being with my mother was not a safe environment. It was very ugly. It was very ugly. People change. Maybe you guys can work it out. Family's a big part of our lives. 
I wanted Taylor to try to reach out to her mother because I think everybody needs to be forgiven, given a second chance. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Taylor finally agrees, not for herself, but for her daughter, Isabel. We need to get Isabel and mom together to really make sure that there's a relationship there with the two of them, because I had a wonderful relationship with my grandmother. Any word yet? No, not yet. Despite Taylor's misgivings, later that summer, the day arrives when estranged mother and daughter are reunited. I had my worries, I had my concerns, I had my fears, but the thing that kept, you know, overcoming all of that was, you know, people change, Taylor. You have to remember that people change. It's okay. I was happy to hear that Taylor wanted her mother to come out and spend time with us. I was hoping for the best. I really didn't know what I was expecting. How are you? Hello, darling. Hello, Joyce. Have you been eating? You look terrible. Way too thin. Immediately, you know, out of her mouth was the judgment. Hi, I'm Steven. Uh, it's nice to finally meet you. When I met Joyce, the vibe she put off was hateful in a way. Isabel, this is Joyce, my mother. Your grandmother. Isabel stayed back a little bit. I think that it was a little strange for her. Aren't you just precious? Do you have a hug for your grandma? Luna. My mother, when she saw Isabel, she's looking basically at a child that looks so much like me at that age, the age that she turned her back to me. I'm sure it was a long trip. I'm sure you're ready to get settled. Let me show you where you're staying. I was hoping they could build their relationship back up, but I was still nervous. I didn't want Taylor to get hurt again. You'll be staying in Isabel's room. I hope that's all right. She can sleep with Steven and me. Um, there's fresh towels in the bathroom and help yourself to anything in the fridge. You know, there's a presence here. Right here in this room with us. What? You have a ghost. I know you're here. I can feel you. Joyce, please don't say that kind of thing in my home. Have some respect. We have a child in this home. That is no place for you to sit here and start picking at spirits, ghosts, entities, whatever. And Taylor, please call me mom. It was just a negative vibe. That night, Joyce attempts to make contact with the spirit she believes is trapped in the house. I know you're here. Show yourself to me. Come forward. Come forward. Come and show yourself. I command you. Soon after settling into their new home, Taylor Jones invites her estranged mother for a visit.
Taylor. My mother and I, we had a relationship when I was younger, and then it fell apart. Hello, darling. So as an adult, there was 10 years that went by. Hello, Joyce. Taylor's father kept her away from Joyce once he found out she practiced black magic. There was a lot of ugliness that happened. There were a lot of things that she got into that I didn't understand as a child. I had lost her so many times before. You know, there's a presence here. I kept in the back of my mind. You know, don't get your hopes up. That night, Joyce is staying in her granddaughter's attic bedroom. I know you're here. When she makes contact with what she believes is a ghost. Downstairs, Taylor is suddenly overcome with an uneasy feeling. I didn't feel right. Something was off. You could feel the, a coolness. Come out. You can't hide. Show yourself. I know you are here. Come and show yourself. I command you. What the hell do you think you're doing? And don't lie to me, I heard you. I'm simply communicating with the spirits in your house. I was mortified. This is supposed to be my mother, and she's going against everything that I believe. I think I know what happened here. Joyce senses a presence in the house. She said, there's a little girl that lives in there. She said that she felt that little girl was hurting bad. And she is not alone. A darker spirit is with her. She sensed there was something else here with us, that there are other spirits here. But Taylor refuses to listen. I told you I didn't want you to do this. No more, mother. I told her point blank. I said, you need to shut your mouth. We have a child in this home. You are putting us all in danger in doing this. I want you out. Black magic, it affects everybody around you. Everybody. I don't know everything that she's done. I don't know what she's capable of. Distraught, Taylor tells Stephen that she wants her mother to leave as soon as possible. I felt violated. Our home at that point completely 100% had been violated. I told Stephen, I can't have her in my life. I can't, I can't do this. This is an ugly circle. It's not fair for Isabel to see me upset. It's not fair for her to feel tension. I knew she played with black magic when she was out of the States. One of the first things she did was to try to egg on the spirits. Joyce, she was gonna have to go. It's now been two months since Joyce's departure. All seems normal, but Taylor fears her mother's black magic may have conjured up something in the house. When she left, I was definitely on the lookout that she didn't stir things up. I would have to try to calm Taylor down. Don't think about it. Don't put too much thought into it. I heard giggling, you know, little girl giggling. It's coming from Isabel's room. I look at the clock and I'm like, oh my God, no, she needs to be sleeping. <laughs> what happened then? That's silly. Here, do you want to play with this? Oh, my. What are you doing? Playing with my friends. 
You're supposed to be in bed, young lady. She's sitting there on her floor as if she was interacting with somebody. It's a school night. Laughing, giggling. It's bedtime, not playtime. I don't want to hear another noise coming from up here, OK? OK. Close your eyes, Isabel. For the past few months, Stephen McDade, Taylor Jones, and their five-year-old daughter, Isabel, have been living a peaceful life in their new Ohio home. Until Taylor's mother comes for a visit. Come and show yourself. I command you. Joyce likes to stir things up. If there are entities or energies or spirits, she instigates them. But before Joyce can warn her daughter about what she saw, Taylor demands that she leave. I want you out. Soon after Joyce's departure, Isabel begins playing with an imaginary friend. <laughs> At first, her parents aren't concerned. I tried to brush it off as kids and their imaginations. I really didn't worry too much about it. Until Isabel's playmate appears in one of her drawings. When we asked her about the picture, well, who's this right here? There's Isabel, there's mommy, there's daddy, and there's my friend. Taylor and Stephen quickly realized that to Isabel, the little girl is very real. OK, then the wheels start turning. Who is she talking to? I was getting nervous. I was getting anxious. Kind of threw me off. First thing that went through my head was, it seems like something out of a scary movie. But unbeknownst to Taylor and Stephen, Isabel's ghostly friend has a dark secret. A second spirit lurks in the house, and he is terrifying. As the weeks pass, Isabel grows more and more anxious, refusing to enter her attic bedroom. She was scared of something that was in the house. That's when I started getting a little concerned and worried. Isabel was telling us that it felt like there was somebody behind her all the time. She didn't feel like she was alone. It's OK. She just didn't want to be up there. She did not want to be up there. Isabel. What we ended up finding out, I wouldn't have wanted to be up there either. One weekend, Stephen goes out of town. I was uh, going out on a hunting trip, me and my father. I never liked leaving Taylor and Isabel by themselves. This time, I was a little bit more worried with uh, the stuff that was going on in the house. I miss Stephen when he leaves. You know, I was having a hard time sleeping. Rick, 
Luna was right next to me. All of a sudden, she started barking. What is it, Luna? She was locked on something. My initial reaction, I need to protect my child. There's somebody there. Every hair on my body was standing on end. I could sense there was something there. Luna suddenly grows quiet. When Luna kind of backed off, I was like, all right, whatever that was is gone. For more haunting, visit DestinationAmerica.com. For the past few weeks, five-year-old Isabel... Do you want to play with this? ...has been passing the time with an imaginary playmate I didn't feel like it was something to worry about. But is it just a pretend friend? Or could it be a ghost? One weekend, her dad goes on a hunting trip, leaving Isabel and her mom alone in the house. Luna? Taylor grabs one of the guns the family keeps in the house for protection. There was a man standing plain as day. I had my 38 in position ready to fire. Then in an instant, he's gone. Taylor now feels certain her house is haunted. I was so scared. I couldn't deny that there was a ghost in my house. People say, oh, you're crazy. That stuff doesn't exist. It exists. It is real. It is very real. When Stephen comes home, Taylor tells him about her terrifying encounter. All the doors were locked. There was nothing. And so I come back over here to Luna, and she will not go into the kitchen. She's staying here and refuses to go in. You could just see it all over her face that something happened to her. She said that she's seen somebody at the door that was there, but wasn't there. She was pretty shook up about it. And when I turn around, there's just a guy standing there. There's nothing that I could do, nothing. 
If this is a ghost, I have no control. When am I gonna see something next? When am I gonna feel something next? There was a total feeling of helplessness. Stephen tries to comfort Taylor, but he doesn't know what to do. Taylor started to feel the presence around her all the time. And uh, I know it scared her. I would just try to reassure her as much as I could. Stephen is our protector, you know. He takes care of us girls and would never want us to feel unsafe. And at that point, I knew Stephen could not comfort those feelings. Over the next few days, he attempts to carry on with everyday life, hoping these strange occurrences will stop on their own. I've always believed in ghosts and spirits and stuff like that, but I'd always would try to debunk it. Don't put too much thought into it. Pay no attention to them, and maybe, hopefully, it would just go away. But lately, he can't shake the feeling that he's being watched. I'm just getting creepy feelings. And I happen to glance up. There was a guy standing up there in Isabel's bedroom. Got in the house. There's yeah, nobody there. Like Taylor, Stephen is now convinced that the house is haunted. I kind of knew right away that it wasn't a human. Yeah, I mean, what's a guy to do? A ghost or a spirit? I mean, we can't throw a punch at him and make him back off or anything like that. I kind of felt helpless. Uh, I didn't know what to do. Stephen and I had a long talk, and we need to get somebody in here. And we need to do it fast before this escalates even more. Desperate for help, Stephen and Taylor contact husband and wife paranormal investigators Patty and Lee Allen of Paravisions. Taylor, she mentioned that her mother, Joyce, uh, was doing some black magic here. Black magic often employs spells or curses meant to inflict harm. Black magic is not something to be toyed with. I thought it was a potential trigger. Patty uses an EMF meter to look for fluctuations in electromagnetic energy. Lee has the psychic ability to sense paranormal activity. I actually not just see, but I can actually feel what they're feeling, the spirit. Standing there, I felt overwhelmed. Suddenly, Lee has a vision. You know how when your hands fall asleep, that sensation? My whole body felt that way. As soon as I get that sensation, it's on. All right, fellas, where are we at? I think it's on you now. Yeah. Hand me up, gentlemen. In the vision, three men are gambling at a table in the house when one of them grows increasingly frustrated. Full house. Don't leg it right. He was sitting with these two guys. Something came upon him that he didn't like the way the guy was dealing the cards. Money's all in. You think you can get away with cheating, mate? Hey, don't, don't blame me, man. Not your lucky day. Oh, come on, man. What? What's going on? Come on. He went a little ballistic. Can you believe this guy? Just, this you just basically now. started here. I think something funny is going on. This is just a trade out of time here. Hey, what the hell? Oh, my God. No, no, not no. my lucky night, right? No, 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 no. no. Hey, what the hell? No, no, no. And he wasn't going to take it anymore. And he shot them.
killer hears a noise coming from the attic. All of a sudden, he went upstairs. In a small home outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, a family of three has been haunted by the ghosts of two tormented souls, a frightened little girl, and a sinister man. You'd come in the house and it'd be like a creepy vibe. My biggest concern at that point was the safety of my girls. In an effort to reclaim their home, the family calls in paranormal investigators Patty and Lee Allen of Paravisions. Suddenly, Lee has a vision of a tragic incident he believes took place inside the house many years ago. You think you can get away with cheating me? It don't matter if it's 1800, 1920, 1999. I'm there in that time frame. Hey, oh. hey come on. I feel everything that was going on at that time. Hey, what the hell? Oh my God. Not my lucky night, right? No, no, no. The first thing I thought of is I got to follow this guy. In the attic, Lee sees a little girl hiding in fear. She was so scared, just shaken and cold. She was so terrified that even if she breathed, she felt like he was going to hear it. out of his trance and into present-day reality. She's dead. What did you see? He killed them all. He said, there's bodies in here. He said, I can just smell the blood. Two men, a little girl. He, the little girl. She's here. She's upstairs. Lee believes they are dealing with what's called a residual haunting, in which a traumatic event is replayed over and over. Residual hauntings that's affected in this home is something that happened at its time, and it constantly repeats itself. It's a stamp of memory, and she was still trapped in that time frame. Come help me. We're going to cross this little girl over. When a spirit has not crossed over, my belief is that they needed their story to be told. It's OK. What's your name? Tiffany. Well, that's a pretty name. Although Patty cannot see Tiffany, she can feel her. Sitting there, the entire left hand in front of my body 
was freezing cold. You've passed on, Tiffany. That means you don't have to stay here. You can go to a place where nothing will ever hurt you again. I can help. All you gotta do is look to the light. A crossover you can do just by prayers. You can lead them to the light. If they see it, they can go. You just gotta talk to them, convince them, and um, let them know that it's okay. Dear God, take this spirit, your child, Help her to cross over. Take away her pain and suffering. Save her as only you can do. Amen. It's okay. It's okay. It felt as if the energy in the room had changed, and I couldn't feel a pressure on my hand anymore. The coldness left, and it was that warm sensation from my head all the way down to my toes. I felt with everything I had that she was safe, that she was gone, and that she was in a better place. It brought tears to my eyes because we shared this moment with this little girl, and our creator was right there, and he brought us all together and she went to her resting place. Suddenly, Lee is struck by another vision. Lee? What's wrong? Killer's still here. Isabel isn't safe. No one in the family is. For more than six months, Taylor, Stephen, and their daughter, Isabel, have been haunted by two spirits. Living through something like this, it's terrifying. Paranormal investigators finally released the soul of one of the ghosts, a victim of murder. But for the family, the ordeal is far from over. The other entity, the girl's killer, is still there. Now with the girl gone, we were worried that he would turn his attention to either Isabel or Taylor and undo everything we had tried to do by calming the house down. To rid the house of the evil ghost, Lee approaches him with compassion. A normal paranormal investigator would just have went in and they would have attacked him, they would have provoked him. But then I got to think of him not as just a creepy crook that killed these people, but he's got a heart just like us. And I think he's entitled to justice just as well. Where is she? He knew I was there, he knew I could see. You can't have her. You have to go now, too. You have turned your back on God. But all you have to do is turn around, and he will acknowledge you. I told him, I says, I'm not here to judge you for what you did to those guys downstairs, what you did to that little girl. I'm here to help you. I'm here for you to cross over. I'm here for you. I'm going to pray for you. The gunman concedes his fate and allows Lee to guide him to the spirit world. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. It's over. The atmosphere in the room definitely lifted. It's as if we could all finally breathe again. When I feel it in my heart, I know the spirit is gone. But there are still unanswered questions. Who were these spirits who appeared in Lee's vision? To this day, their identities remain a mystery. When we researched, I was unable to find any documentation of the death of a small child in that area. As for Taylor's mother, the family has not renewed contact since she visited their home. But they will always wonder whether her black magic awakened the spirits. Come and show yourself. I command you. Or if these entities were already attached to the house. I believe that this case was sort of a perfect storm with the history of our client's mother delving into some black magic, along with the residual of the building itself. I know it had something to do with her. It definitely got very active after she left. Whatever the answers, Stephen, Taylor, and Isabel will be forever grateful to Lee and Patty. I love Paravisions because they're worried about my family and they just wanted to help us out. We are extremely grateful. They listen to us, they care. And I'll forever be thankful because they, they calmed our house down. In June 2014, Stephen McDade and Taylor Jones wed in a small ceremony. Their daughter, Isabel, serves as their flower girl. I'm very happy that I finally made Taylor an honest woman and we got married under the eyes of God. Today, the McDade family is living peacefully in the same home they moved into nearly a year ago. The helplessness has lifted, the fear is gone, and I love having our happy home back. <laughs> it feels like a home again now, like when we first moved in, before all the activity started. It feels like our house now. Our daughter loves being in her room now. She has no issue going anywhere in the house anymore. She's not afraid. There's no problems, none whatsoever. Salt Lake City, the capital of Utah, 
was founded in 1847 by Mormon pioneers. Persecuted for their faith, the Mormons came to this peaceful mountain valley seeking refuge from a dark and brutal past. Here, spirits still feel the torment of those bygone days. Souls trapped for eternity within the walls of the city's oldest homes. February 2003. I've got hot chocolate if anyone's interested. Hey. I am, I am. Are the marshmallows? April James and her fiance, Matt Brody, live together with April's two sons in a small but loving household. Matt, a general contractor, takes pride in his role as surrogate dad to 13-year-old Chris and 7-year-old Brian. I love them like they're my own. They're incredible boys. They've accepted me into their lives, and I really feel that we make a really good family together. We having any luck? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm realizing it would be a lot easier for us to buy a new home if we were independently wealthy. April works nights as manager of a nightclub. They're eager to start their new life together. I just got a job promotion, and Matt and I were making a lot more money than we were used to, and we really wanted to have a bigger house for the children. And I wanted my dream home, I wanted to have a Victorian. April's wish is soon realized when they find a home in one of the oldest sections of Salt Lake. Matt, this place is perfect. After only a brief tour, April knows she has found her home. Hey, um, look, uh, we love it, you know? I mean, can we talk? I mean, whatever work you're doing, just stop. Just stop right now and, you know, make, can we make a deal or? Well, I don't know, um. Matt makes an offer on the property. It was grand. It was 100 years old, it had history, it was gorgeous. It's everything I wanted to ever give her and I knew it was the right house. The boys were pretty excited that there was a tree swing and the fact that they were gonna have more room. Thanks. Well? Well. It looks like April gets her dream house. <gasps> really? <laughs> I know. Look, I mean, it's not like we can move in tomorrow. Though, okay? That's okay. I mean, I'm talking major renovations here, a lot of work. I know. The ground up, wiring, plumbing, everything's gonna be redone. I know, Total I know. Huh? Why do you think I keep you around? They agree to lease the house with an option to buy. It's a fresh start for a new family. It was our dream home. In the spring, Matt oversees the renovations while the family continues to live in their old house. Hey, um, I'm not gonna have any problem getting the electrical up the code, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna need a bigger crew to get the gas lines in and the boiler. Okay, okay, well I can take care of, I can take care of the floors, I can take care of the plumbing. I, oh, it reminds me, I need your help before you leave to get an old tub down from upstairs, okay? It needed everything. You plan on moving in here? Nothing in the house had been maintained uh, adequately. I mean, this is an old home. And we decided to work our way down floor. from the third floor. Mm -hmm. We knew if we made that livable, I could continue to work on the house as I had time. Okay, okay. You really got your work cut out for you, don't you? Tell me about it. <laughs> hey, I'm upstairs, okay? All right.
inside the closet, there's a small two by two opening that a child could fit through. On the other side, there was a kid's area with paintings and butterflies completely hidden from the rest of the house. It had a larger opening for like a man to get through that had been nailed shut. seen chambered rooms off of a closet that had only a small opening like that. It almost became kind of a fascination with me well, why it was there. I mean, it didn't make any sense. Matt! Hey. Didn't you hear me calling you? No. No, look at this. Look at this place. Wow. This is we talked about leaving it. But then I thought, there's no access to it. So I had suggested to April that we open the closet up, make a huge walk-in closet. And I knew once I opened it up, it would be beautiful, and the light would flow in. That sounds I wanted great. a big closet, and he was just doing it for me. So but I was still a little upset because I knew that that closet belonged to someone, a child, a certain play area. You know, it, it had some type of history to it. Matt gets right to work on the project. You scared me. Oh, I'm just looking for the circuit breaker. I'm gonna work on the wiring. Good, good, good. Look, I was doing some demo upstairs. I'm just gonna leave this stuff right here. Is that all right? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Circuit boxes. This oh, way, good. friend. Yeah. That ought to do it.
I've been doing this job for 20 years and I've never been bit so many times as in this one house. What are you talking about? There's something going on with your breakers. I go downstairs and I flip them off and then I listen, click, 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 and they come back on. I mean, I can get through it, I can get the electrical done, but I'm telling you there's something going on in here. It just seemed like at every turn, every workman I had had an issue in the house for some apparent reason. I'll see you tomorrow. Weeks later, at their old house, Uh, there was a burglar. Uh, he got away. Honey, honey. Oh, God, the boys. The boys. Good job. It left us with a very unsettled feeling. All right, thank you. Yeah, okay. Thanks. It's all right. They're still sleeping. Good. Yeah. Let's get this mess Don't, 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 don't. Don't touch. Just good. The cops will be here. They said not to touch. Though the renovations are not complete, April suggests moving into their new home. We just wanted to get away. We didn't feel safe there. In the summer of 2003, Matt and April rent out their small home and move into the old Victorian across town. Although there's still a lot of work to be done, Matt has finished the upstairs rooms as planned. Take it off. Take, take, take it off. Take it off. All right. As the weeks go by, the family settles into their new home. But it's a difficult time for the devoted couple. I'm off. Okay. April's working 50 to 60 hours a week, third shift, Sorry. which was leaving us passing like ships. Why do they call it graveyard shift? Because mom's real job is at the cemetery digging up the bodies. It is not. You better watch it, mister. I'm going to bury you. Love it.
Lights out, little man, it's late. Bed bugs bite. I'm here. But I heard noises. Look, it's okay. I'll, I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah, thanks, bud. You can go back to bed. He's just having another nightmare. It wasn't a nightmare. It was real. The noises are real. Okay. It's all right. Now look, I'll check it out, okay? Check it out. begins to worry about Brian's frequent nightmares. It was a constant state of bad dreams, and it wasn't just at one time a night. It was several episodes every night. Oh, uh, big boy bed, okay? It's all right. Sleep in here, my friend. You all right? Something had closed my bedroom door. I had no explanation for what had happened. But after the door had closed in front of me, I never felt really comfortable with him sleeping very far from me. Over the next few weeks, Matt has many restless nights. We were just getting moved into the house, and I'm very frustrated because I still have heavy construction going on. It's a mess, and I mean, everybody's, you know, stressed out. It became more and more uh, a problem to get any sleep. Thank you. 
I thought I was losing my mind. These were not normal events. There was a lot of things that weren't adding up in the house. Not wanting to alarm his family, Matt keeps the strange events to himself. He and April make time for family fun whenever possible. We were doing everything we could do to keep the quality of life that we wanted for the boys. Should we put them on the house or should we put them on the yard? The trees? The trees. I think so. Everything seemed to be fine. I was thinking, you know, what, what was that? Well, where did that voice come from? Several nights later, April tries to relax after working another graveyard shift. The minute I said April, the hair dropped. Hey, 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 April, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you all right? Are you sure you're all right? Something was braiding your hair. I, was, I saw it on the steps and there was nothing there. Matt, we need to face facts. Something is in this house. Matt really opened up to me. Explanation. He said, yeah, I was just trying to protect you and the boys because I didn't want them to know what was going on. We'll call your mom. We'll have them stay over there for a few days just till we figure out what's going on, okay? April's mom agrees to take care of the kids for a couple of days. Oh, hi, hi Grandma. Grandma. Oh. How you doing? Yep. Yeah. I really appreciate you taking the boys like this. Mom. Oh, it's no problem. But are you two okay? It's always stressful moving into a new house. Do you guys want to come in and relax for a while? Yeah. Can't. 
It's just we have a lot of work still. We have a lot of work still left to do. But thanks, Mom. Okay. With the kids safe, Matt and April are determined to face whatever is haunting their home. I dumped my life savings into that house and our time and energy, and I didn't want to just give it up. Looking for ways to combat the unknown forces in their house, Matt and April researched the world of hauntings and the paranormal. Hey, it says here that if you if you command them to leave and go to the light, that they will. You just have to uh, burn the sage, which evidently neutralizes their spirit or something. Are you sure you want to do this by yourself? We're a very strong couple, and I've always believed that love can conquer anything, and I knew that we could solve this somehow. Look, just go to work. Don't worry about it, and uh, I'll call you later, OK? I wasn't going to be driven out. It almost became a personal war between me and that house. I was going to fight it all the way. April had already gotten sage. The people had said that sage is very spiritual. Sage could neutralize the energy of a house. And I saged that house from top to bottom. I never physically saw it, but my immediate feeling was, I found you. This is where you hide. After that, the house seemed completely neutral for three days. Nothing seemed out of ordinary. Everything seemed completely as if it never happened. Brian's having a nightmare. Maybe you're dreaming. Brian's at your mom's. that we are afraid for our lives. I told her, that's it. We're done. Whatever's going on, pack up your stuff, we're going. It was apparent that whatever was going on in the house, it was building power, and it was becoming stronger. Matt and April check into a hotel until they can figure out their next move. April, April, hey, baby, baby, honey. Sorry, what'd you say? I don't know what else to do. I just think we're running out of options here, babe. I was talking to a friend of mine about what was going on, and a woman had overheard us talking about the experiences that were going on, and she mentioned to me that her husband, Bill, is a paranormal investigator and gave me his number to call him. We've got to and she told me and assured me that he could help me in what was happening with us. We need professional help.
They meet Bill Spencer at the house. My initial impression was skeptical, but when I met him in person, I, I got a sense of professionalism from him. They were very scientific. It's nice to meet you both. Yeah, here's the, uh, it's the key. Thank you. And uh, we're going to do everything we can to help you out. The name of our group is Insight Paranormal. We're looking for the most objective evidence that we can gather to either prove or disprove the paranormal activity that's been reported. I just don't want another family. Jeremy Spencer, Bill's nephew, is co-founder of the group. You could tell that it was very emotional for them. I honestly believe that they truly believed what they were experiencing was real. There is a certain credibility with that. Bill and Jeremy agree to spend the night alone at the house. I was really excited to know that someone could maybe get some proof that we weren't crazy after all. Testing, testing. The team sets up recording devices throughout the house in the hopes of catching the sounds of ghosts undetectable to the human ear. Can you hear us? What paranormal experts call EVP. Can you hear us? EVP stands for Electronic Voice Phenomenon. Basically, it is a collection of disembodied voices caught on tape. Is anyone here? We'll ask questions with the hope that we will get an answer on playback. Have Matt or April done something wrong? Have we offended you? What are you trying to say? After several visits to the house, the Spencers share their findings. Come on in. Well, I almost um, feel a little nervous. Ah, don't be. This is the second half of the process. First, we did the recordings on site. Then we bring them back here and we process them. So, do you have EVP? <laughs> Unquestionably. We received well over 100 EVPs which is an extraordinary amount for any one location. It's the most we've ever gotten anywhere. In fact, we've never encountered anything like this before. Mm -hmm. Testing, testing. Is anyone here? Can you hear us? Now, most EVP is residual. A residual energy will stay behind or be, be trapped in, in space and time of, of any given location. There's, there's no consciousness there, it's just an image caught in time. Stuck in space. Now, the other kind of EVPs, they're actually conscious. You ask them a question and they're going to answer. Have we offended you? The other half of those EVPs seem to be conscious that they actually respond to our questions. There was a definite strong male voice, and there was a fairly clear, I want you out of here. What, what, did, what did we do to? I felt very frightened because it was directed at us. Did you hear the voice of a little boy? I was like, that's the voice that I was hearing at night. It, it's true, that child really does exist. The idea that a, a child might be trapped there or stuck there, you know, it was kind of gut-wrenching. I think a child could be the key to this whole thing. Now, the question is, which one? You don't have the ghost of a child in your house. You have the spirits of a dozen children, maybe more.
Bill and Jeremy Spencer can confirm that Matt and April's house is haunted, but unfortunately, they're unable to cleanse the house of its spirits. In the days that follow, April searches for a new house, but she and Matt refuse to sell the old one. We're afraid that another family might experience the same thing that we did, and we could just never forgive ourselves for that. So we're looking for a smaller house this time, at least two bedrooms, maybe a small yard if that's possible. From staying in the hotels, we were kind of running out on money, and so we thought that we need to find a place for the kids to be safe and, and a home to call our own. Like what happened to the big, beautiful Victorian you bought? Is it not working out? We contacted a real estate agent and told her the problems that we were having in the house. She mentioned to us this woman, Debbie, she's a clairvoyant, and she has the ability to cleanse houses. She may be able to help. Here's her card. So she gave me Debbie's number to contact her and see what she could do to help me. Debbie White agrees to investigate the house. She's a real estate broker with a psychic gift. I found that, that I have this ability to read things and to perceive people in the room that have passed on. And with my real estate career, I've been involved in several homes wherein I would walk into the home and find that there were, in fact, ghosts or other beings within the house and be able to help them to leave or to move on. sense that there was something going on in here. The next day, Debbie meets with April and Matt to discuss what she found. Thank you. I believe the force in your house is the spirit of a man who once lived there. A Mormon, a polygamist, with several wives and many children. But the Mormon church outlawed polygamy years ago. Well, they lived there almost a century ago. Now tell me, did you change that upstairs bedroom? Yeah, yeah, I did some renovations on the closet. Uh, ah, why? Well, when I entered that closet, I felt an evil presence that made me sick to my stomach. The feeling of black and evil hiding, hiding something from me. That's where he did it. Did what? He's torturing or he's molesting these children individually or several at a time. That's where he does his work, is in that room. What he's done has just eaten him up and it leaves nothing but blackness. I don't think he's ever left the house. I think he's been there generation after generation. But his secret has always been left alone. When Matt altered that, he let great light into the house and he also took away his hiding place. Uh, what, what do we do? You need to cleanse and bless that house right away. Now, I can do it, but I'm going to need your help. Yeah. We knew there was no way we would risk anyone's happiness, well-being, or health in the future in that house, anyone's, until we helped everything in that house move on. In February 2006, Debbie White performs a ritual cleansing of the historic home. Is everyone ready? Bill and Jeremy Spencer agree to record the ceremony. We had our cameras and microphones running to document, you know, what was going on. Let us begin. 
April and Matt carry candles to light the way for lost souls. Debbie sprays salt water to purify the ground. I have a blessed salt water that I spray into any type of an angle to the house at the base of the floor. Is this part of the railing that was from that secret room upstairs? Yeah, yeah. Boy, I'll tell you, just 100% him coming out of that piece of wood. Anger and hostility and bitterness. I think we should take it with us. We may need it. I wanted him to have his security blanket. I think we should try to put things back the way they were. Well, she felt the reason why he was so upset is because we took it out. If we put some things back to normal, then it would help us that he wouldn't be so upset at us. here. It's all right. Debbie, are you all right? <laughs> all is as it should be. Trust us. You can come out. We're here to help you. Follow us. As we blessed the house, I found these children actually following us, walking with us, all knowing we were going to one location, which is the closet in the upper level. With the captive spirits released, 
the evil entity is finally gone. You okay? Oh, oh baby. Matt. Oh, We're safe. We're okay. I'm so scared. It is Debbie's belief that once the spirits have been removed from the house, the items used for the ceremony must be kept on the property to ensure the evil spirit never returns. The light the candles provided will protect future owners from harm. And then they are buried on the premises, giving them complete ownership in the home. I believe with all my heart he has left that house and he is not coming back to that house and he can't. And we've left these personal articles to make sure he doesn't. If someone else ever had an experience like this, I would always suggest to them to get professional help and to get out of the house right away. Because it's not worth what you put your family through to try to fight something that you have no control over. Since the blessing, there has been no supernatural activity in the house. But April still wonders about the desperate little boy who would visit her at night. Debbie believed that he just wanted to try to tell me what was wrong with him. That's why he kept coming to me at night. Matt plans to continue the renovations until the house is ready to be put back on the market. We will continue to monitor the house until it is subsided and it is safe for some family to live in. We've bought another home. We've moved on. We've found peace in our family and are rebuilding our life.